Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to my outdoors channel. In this video, this is about setting up my GoPro cameras and so forth on my kayak and some of the trials and errors that I went through in order to try and get this set up so it worked fairly well. Uh, so far this is what I've accomplished and this is the end of the season here in 2018. So next year I'll probably discover some more things and I've got two cameras featured in this one, which is one camera that sits forward of me, another camera that sits as a boom off to the side of me, and I can get a lot of different shots off of that. And I've added also, since then, I've added a third GoPro camera that I'll probably wear on my hat or something to give another view from my seated position anyway. So... Uh, stay tuned here. I'll show you what the setups I did here, some of the trials and errors that I went through, and hopefully this will help you if you're going to set up to record some videos of your own. So I'll show you how I do this. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is to figure out where I want to mount this mount for my GoPro camera. And so it's within reach of me. So I'm going to sit down here and see what my reach is. A little precarious to get in. Okay. So I'll be sitting in my kayak like this. Hey, I like this seat. This is pretty good. Uh, so this is going to be my front camera. And I want it so it's within reach that I can reach it and operate the buttons and so forth. So right about there, make a mark with a carpenter's pencil so I don't leave too much of an ugly mark there. So that's going to work, and then with some of the adjustments I've got on this, even though that's out of tilt and so forth, I can tilt this camera on its axis and so forth uh, to get a good level shot. Also, I may get something where it extends it up a little bit so it's a little bit higher. I'll see how it goes and how the shots come in. They say, having a camera about an arm length away from you is a pretty good view with these GoPros. All right, so that's what I'm gonna work on mounting there. All right, yeah, I notice in these videos when I'm standing here behind this thing, it makes me look small and the kayak big and other times the kayak looks small by comparison. Tricks of photography, I guess. Of course, I'm using a wide angle lens, so that kind of changes the relationship of things sometimes. Anyways, uh, I got this on top of my table saw in my shop, so it raises it up quite a ways, makes me look short. And, uh, but it's good for getting the work done that I need. Puts it at a really good level for me to work on it. Anyways, what I'm doing here is I'm doing a couple of modifications to put two camera mounts on this kayak. I've not had any cameras on here before other than my smartphone. Yeah, that's always been a handheld kind of deal. So what I got here is some uh, Scotty tracks. As shown previously, I marked a spot here to determine where I want to mount this track at and then all the hardware that goes with this to Put this track on here and get this camera to work and this will be it's kind of like a ball joint here or I can get this adjusted to a lot of good positions and then just tighten it down so basically all I got to do is mount the Scotty track on here which is a bunch of holes in this plate and I'll be putting that on with some uh, pop rivets the ones that are made for sealing and water so they got kind of a rubber seal to them then, on this other side here, I'm going to put like a boom arm that I saw on Kayak Hacks where he put on, a, he made a boom arm out of some PVC and it swings around and gives you a really wide view of stuff. So I'll show you how I do that also. Here, I'm going to work on attaching the Scotty mount track uh, at this mark that I made in a previous uh, clip so I could have you know a certain reach. And I had positioned that so that this would slide in and go up to here to this point and be 
within our arm's reach for me. Now I can also go back here several inches if I need to gain more of a distance away. And that's the advantage of having these Scotty tracks is, or any of these kind of tracks, uh, is that you can gain that advantage and adjustability so that you can get a better viewing option with your camera. So I'm going to go ahead and get this attached on here with some pop rivets that are watertight and get moving on with the rest. And another note I wanted to make is how when I do all of this, I try and set all my accessories into position so that I can test and see that none of them are going to interfere with each other and cause any problems. Otherwise, uh, you know, that's a big mistake I have to fix. And then also, I don't want any of these things to be in the way of my paddling when I'm paddling around the lake. So, always things to consider and think ahead of time. It's like they say in the Army, the five P's, prior planning prevents poor performance. So, check it out before you do it, before you make the commitment of drilling holes, so you know that uh, everything's going to work together. Sometimes I like to kind of take you through some of my thought processes here and how and why I do things and perhaps that will help you when you're doing things um, how to try and think forward a little bit for what you're doing and what the consequences are going to be. Now I took a look at this track here uh, for this front GoPro that I'm going to mount here. This track is like 7 inches long and I've got another track that's 11 inches long that I'm going to use uh, for mounting that boom arm back over on this side, which I'll be showing you later. And I thought, you know what, that boom arm really doesn't have to move back and forth that all much. It's going to be pretty stationary. I mean, probably even a one inch track will be sufficient for that. So what I'm going to do is check out perhaps mounting this shorter one back there and this longer one perhaps up front here to give me a longer reach that I can use for adjusting my camera and so forth. So the holes on these two line up perfectly together. So what I'm going to do is do the four holes on the shorter track and that will fit this. And I can position this in here temporarily with a couple of screws to hold it in place and I can test the effect that I'm going to get from my camera being able to adjust to these different lengths. So, I'll basically, I'll do that testing. Perhaps I'll get some video clips of it. And then, uh, in the end, I'll show you how I get this all attached and which one I go with. What I did is I marked out for making four holes here based on the Scotty track on the gunwale here. And I lined up the longest one to make sure I get it kind of centered on the gunwale here. And then I marked out to the four holes to this length because that's going to be the length of this one. So those holes will line up to that point. So I did these four holes here. What I'll do is drill these out to a 3 sixteenths inch because that's the size I need for doing the pop rivets. And then what I will do is to hold these temporarily in place while I'm kind of testing out this uh, fit. I've got these number 10 screws I'm going to use for holding these in place uh, as I do my testing. Once I'm satisfied with which length of track I want to use, then I'll make all the rest of the holes and put the pop rivets in. And I've center punched the center of my holes here to keep my drill bit on track. If you don't center punch things, whether it's on soft material or hard material, your drill bit's going to kind of wander a bit on you. And that's, then you're not going to be right on. Get my drill bit on there. All right. I'm going to check it out with this short track first and see what kind of uh, length and focal length I get out of my camera with just the short track. 
So I'll put these screws in to hold it temporarily in place. Put my screwdriver here. Just screw that in. All right, so I'm gonna kind of take some of my stuff out of here, lighten it up so I can set it down on the ground and I can sit on it and then do my testing with the camera. Okay, I've got my GoPro mounted on this front part here and at the forward position on the short track. And I'll see what kind of a focal range I get, whether or not I fit entirely into the image or not. Actually, I've got the setting for linear. So it's not going to be as wide of an angle. Now I will move it back and see what kind of focal I get from there. Okay, now I've got it as far back as it goes and see what kind of a focal range I get on this one. And then I'll try the longer track so it'll get even further back see what kind of uh, how much I get into the image and so forth. I won't know until I put this in the computer and see what the video looks like. This will probably be um, a shorter shot for me to do. I got the GoPro on the 12 inch track or the 11 inch track and it's all the way back and I should get a much bigger better view out of this. Uh, let me try and change the up one so it's a little bit wider than linear see how that looks. Okay, so now I've changed the GoPro camera from a linear view to medium view. A little bit wider than linear, but not. It's got two more steps up where you can go really wide. Really be like a, what's it called, a fish lens or something. But I'll see how this works out at this distance back. I think this is the one that's probably going to work best. The other one, unless I go to the medium or a wider lens, I think this one's going to get me more in the view better uh, than that other one. Put over here for that boom that's going to come around. All right, we'll see how this one looks. What I learned in that previous video with the GoPro, checking out my positions with that and everything, that it angles up at me uh, regardless of how I put it. So what I need to do is get one of these Scotty gear track adapters, uh, extension arm. It'll take it up higher so I can get it up to more of a level with my head. And that'll work a lot better. Also, it kind of allows you to adjust some angles and so forth. So I can maybe get out a little bit further or maybe more into the center of the kayak. Also, as far as the boom arm that I'm going to put on, on the other end here, uh, I was looking at that and decided instead of putting it on one of these Scotty tracks, I'm going to put a, like a rod holder like this in there, and that'll give me a lot better security uh, for that boom arm as far as that goes. Also, it's just going to be a more solid mount to it. I'll have to order all these parts in from Amazon, and then I can wrap this up. Today I received in my uh, extension here for my camera mount for my front camera. This is a GoPro. It's a GoPro um, Hero 5 that I've got here. That on that boom arm in the back there, I'm going to be using a uh, GoPro 5 Session. Uh, I like using this one here because it has a better mic on it than the Session does, so this will be my primary sound source when I'm out on the lake. Anyways. This got me up an extra 15 inches and it's adjustable. And then in the next clip here, I'm going to show you some footage that I took with this camera in this position. Another good thing about it too was that it didn't get in the way of my paddling at all. So it worked out great. All right, for making this camera boom that I'm gonna have uh, just behind my seat on my right side, 
I've got this piece of PVC I've got here. Uh, I think I had to buy a 10 foot piece and I cut this one to 5 foot because uh, you can either get them in like 2 foot lengths or 10 foot lengths at your big box store. So that's what I did and what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to cut this uh, one piece to 34 inches long and the other one to 13 inches long and one end is going to go into the Scotty mount that I'm going to put on my gunnel behind my seat and this will fit into this rod holder get it so it's fitting right back there even then I'm going to put a pin through here to hold this PVC in place so this won't lift up on me like that I uh, want it to remain steady on there then I'm going to cut it to that 34 inch length I'm going to put on a 45 degree angle also as I might mention this is all inch and a quarter PVC pipe. 34 inches and I'll put in this 45 degree angle and I'm going to lay them out kind of flat on here. Then I go the other 13 inches and put in this 90 degree elbow on there and all laying out flat because once I get this all together it's going to be in a lot of adjustable positions anyway so it doesn't matter I'll just assemble it kind of flatly. Once I get the, the 90 degree elbow in, then I can put this uh, other adapter in here, which is a 40 or a 90 degree adapter, which is an inch and a quarter to a one inch, that they call this. So I think this is the inch and a quarter here, and then it's got a one inch on this side. And what I did was I, it's a cap really, it's a cap, and I drilled a hole through it for a quarter inch screw so I could mount this assembly on here and I filled inside this cap with an epoxy glue. This has had weeks to cure so it's really pretty stable now. I'll source this uh, ball joint here which fits a GoPro mount and it's got a ball so you can undo that and you can adjust it infinitely. It's even got one point where I can do 90 degrees on it. Don't think I'll need that very much but that's available, so I'll source that for you below. So what I'm going to do is get these pieces cut up here and then use the PVC glue to glue the assembly together as I need it. An additional detail I'll give you on this here is this is an inch and a quarter cap that uh, normally is sealed. It's a cap in for a piece of pipe and what this does is fit inside the 90 degree angle that fits on to this. Now these 90 degree angles are made to fit over the inch and a quarter PVC. And what I did with this cap here is I drilled a hole in it and then I put in a stainless steel quarter by 20 thread which screws into the bottom of this adapter or mount that I'll source on Amazon here. Uh, it just screws onto there. I had to cut it a little bit short just to make sure it sealed or seated completely then that will fit into the 90 degree elbow and give me the mount and adapter that I need to get all the different angles with the GoPro. So I just wanted to cover that uh, particular detail with you on how this works. Make it easier to understand. Okay, I have cut up my pieces here. One to a 34 inch length. I've got a 45 degree elbow. 13 inch length and then a 90 degree elbow. I cleaned these up with some sandpaper to make sure they get a good fit going together. I'm not going to use primer or any of that stuff like you usually do with uh, PVC because I'm not worried about this leaking water. It's not going to be carrying water through this. It's just an assembly to make a support and a boom. So not pl for plumbing. Sanded up these joints so they fit together fairly easily. Got them cleaned up so I get all the sanding dust out of there. Test fitted it. Now what I'll do is apply the PVC glue and assemble all this and I'm going to do it in an order where I put this elbow onto here. I'm going to do this one on here and then I'm going to get it positioned where I can slide it into this and keep it oriented so I've got it going up here like this on this particular elbow here. So I'll get these glued up, spread out a little bit here so I catch any dripping glue. Oh, it's a tight fit can. 
Okay, got the lid loosened up on this so I can continue on here. And you can see how that drips there a bit. And what I'm going to do, try not to make too much of a mess here. I'm going to put the glue around this, smear it around with the dauber here. Then I'm going to slide this joint together here. A little bit of excess to wipe off there. Drip it onto my cloth a little bit. I suppose I should put down some newspaper, but I'll grab a piece of that. Get a piece of newspaper put down here so I can catch all this dripping. Now, I'm going to get this 90 degree elbow onto this end on this one. I think what I'll do is I'll put it inside the joint. That way it's not pushing the glue off on me. Get this one on there. Makes it slide together easier when you got the glue on there. Let these set up for just a few seconds here. Then put some glue on the inside of this one. Get these put together so that I've got this 90 degree elbow facing fairly well vertical. This stuff sets up pretty quick. So <laughs> Now the next is to put this cap on here with the threaded screw I've got. Quarter inch uh, by 20 is your standard camera mount screw. And this fits in here pretty easily. So I got to do is uh, put some glue inside that one. Slip that in there. Doesn't matter about any orientation because it's round anyway so. so there we are we got all this glued together put together the next I'll be working on this part here for securing this into this rod holder so that it won't fall off on me all right so I attach this rod holder here onto the end of this PVC pipe and I drilled a hole through this to line this up so it's lined up correctly here and I used a 3 16 drill bit and I found a, a stainless steel socket cap screw, this one, that fits right in the length. I need about two inches to go through that. And I got this in the nut, which is stainless steel too. And I'll make an image of these and put it up above here so you can see these. And this one here is number eight by 32 by two inch long socket cap screw, which is this, the screw. And then the nut, of course, is a stainless steel uh, nylon lock nut, which is an eight by 32 also. Then the Allen wrench that I'm use to fit this cap screw is a nine sixty fourths. So if you're buying exactly what I got here in order to make this, these are the parts you're gonna need. Uh, so I drilled the hole through with this 3 16 drill bit. Go all the way through. So I can slide the screw through here. Put the nut on the other end. Being that it's a elastic stop nut, I don't have to worry about over torquing it. Just get it snug to fit and hold securely uh, so I don't crush any of the parts here. I use this Allen wrench here to tighten this up until it's snug. And that's good enough. Now I'll have this mounted in my kayak gunnel in a rod holder thing and I can swing this around as needed with my camera out on that end. And I'll show you some video on that how I got this set up once on the kayak. So Pretty much completes this until I get it on the kayak and demonstrate it for you. What I've decided to do is to mount this rod holder on this part of the gunnel here. And then this rod holder of course holds the boom for the micro or the camera. And this will swing around if I can get a clear shot here. And clear the camera there. Be able to clear all the way around. I can clear everything in the back here behind my seat so I don't run into any issues there. 
I'll put this for camera positions all kinds of places. Plus I can angle this boom up and down too in different angles. And then when I need to make adjustments to the camera view, I can pull it in here and I can reach the camera and adjust the view to get what I need. And I can see the view of the camera from the GoPro app on my smartphone. And that'll tell me what the camera is seeing. So I can make adjustments based on that. So this will work pretty good. I have all kinds of room to do this. And I'll get this mounted on to the gunnel here. It'll be all set. All right, what I'm going to do here is I tried to mount this uh, Scotty rod holder mount uh, to my gunnel here uh, with pop rivets, but the pop rivets kept pulling out. It wouldn't stay in. And that's because this is a little bit not perfectly flat, so that's causing it the pop rivets to pull out. I was going to try and put a plate under here that's got threaded nuts and stuff underneath it, but I can't make the reach uh, through here. I thought I would be able to, but I couldn't make the reach through here to be able to hold that and to do this at the same time. Even with a second person, I don't think I can do that uh, because it's just too far to reach in from here. Doesn't look like that much of a distance, but it's just a little bit too much to reach. So what I'm going to resort to here is using these well nuts. What this does is this screws together here. This will go in like that. And then this will go through the rod holder and into this. And on the other side there, this will expand out and draw it tight. And that will hold it in pretty good. Not good for anchor ropes or some other things that require a lot of uh, torque or pressure on it or a lot of pull because these are good for rod holders and fish finders and stuff like that. Anything that's not under a lot of pressure or tension. So this will work good for that. Now this says to drill out the hole to a 2364. I've got a 2364 Forstner bit, but Forstner bits are kind of flat and won't follow the center of the hole here. So they said a 3 8 is a good alternative. It's just slightly smaller than a 2364. And I've got a 3 8 drill bit here, and it's a standard drill tip there instead of a Forstner bit. So it'll center on the hole and stay in position without losing place. So it goes through pretty quick there. Then I can just push these in. These fit, you know, fairly snug, but they go in well. Gets in there flatly. Then I'll put these on, and these will be plenty long enough to be able to reach in there and get it pulled up tight. So I'll go ahead and get these drilled out and get these mounts put in and get this mounted. Two more to go. There we go. Now, grab four screws. Got one in here already. Okay. So this needs to orient this way. Just kind of get these screws started. Grab a screwdriver. Just a Phillips screw. Just a snug them barely here just to get these started. Then I'll cinch them down, go around rotating on tightening them, much like uh, when you put on the lug nuts on a wheel of a car. Just get it on good and tight. Don't need to over muscle it. Got that in. Now I'll be ready to put that rod or that camera boom mount on there. I'll back up and show you that. Okay, hey, put this camera boom on here. Actually, it's going to go this way to get into lock into the socket. Then I can swing this around to whatever position I want. I can change the elevation here. Just not this knob. I'll go up by a notch. There we go. So I can put this in position I want. 
Okay, I'm going to make a tweak or a modification here. As you can see, how this boom kind of droops down here a little bit. And a couple of reasons is, on the back end here, this is sagging back here a little bit, pivoting on this point where I put that screw and nut through. And now it's kind of sagging on me. Also, the angle of this is going downward a bit. I'd rather have it going upward a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this pin out, rotate this so it goes upwards. Then I'll re-drill a hole. Then I'm going to drill a hole back here too and put another one of these pins in to hold this at a level and more secure position. One of these little tweaks that you learn after you get it on there and you find out how things really do line up. So I'll get that fixed and we'll see how that turns out. That'll be a lot better. All right, so I got this adjusted so that this boom, at least for here, it's straight. As I go out further, it goes up a little bit more. Uh, but it remains, you know, relatively straight and good instead of drooping down. Got it maybe a slight angle going up now. That'll be a lot better for, you know, some of the shots. So I'll have a better mid-range uh, for getting some of these shots in there. That'll be great. I like to show you how I do things and tweak things and when I make mistakes, how I fix them. Uh, so that you can learn from that too and how I fix things. And that'll give you some ideas for any future projects that you may also. Gary for Gary's Outdoors. Little bass. Huh? Not a bad one. That's what I would eat. It's the littler ones like this. Yeah. Yeah, because there's less mercury and stuff in them. Ah. There you go. What about one pound bass right there? <laughs> one pound. About a pound. Fun to catch. They'd make a decent eater if uh, you don't, you know, it'll keep the uh, contaminants that are in all the lakes down. Yeah. Larger fish will have a larger concentration. Mm. And uh, off he goes. Yeah. What catch them on? Uh, middle. Well, thank you for watching this video. Hope you got some ideas and some inspiration how to maybe set up some uh, video recording for your fishing adventures. So, if you enjoyed this video and you got some inspiration, please give me a like and share it with your family, friends, and fellow outdoors persons. Also, please subscribe so you won't miss anything. And I do like to get all your comments and ideas at what you want to see and what we can do. So, if ladies don't find you handsome, at least they should find you handy. Thank you.